Hey, what's going on, Current Family? We are so thankful that you're joining us here today as we start a new message series. Our lead pastor, Dan Aldape, is gonna talk about what it means to have a purpose, what it means to live the life that Christ has intended for us to live in the way that he walked on this earth. So we're gonna start this new series and we're excited. So let's go to week one of Called. Follow me. It's a simple request, sometimes spoken from a mother to a child, a brother to a sister, a friend to a friend. It's a request that requires trust, belief, action. It requires you to put your faith in a person who will lead you to safety, to peace. A long time ago, Jesus Christ spoke these simple words to his closest friends, and his invitation still stands today. Come, follow me. Follow me and I will show you how to love others and love yourself. Follow me and I will show you how to repent and be forgiven and forgive others. Follow me to turn things around, to start over to navigate the storms of life and the storms of death. Follow me to find purpose, your purpose, God's purpose. He taught us the way, he showed us the way. And when we follow his way, we find new life. It's a good day to be in the house. It's Sunday. Come on, it's Sunday. Anybody excited to be here today? Yes? Man, I love our worship team. I love the time that we have uh, together to worship and to celebrate the goodness of our God and uh, to hear his word. So, Father, I just pray right now uh, that you have your way today, Lord. Open our hearts uh, to what you want to speak to us, Lord God. I, I pray that you would use me, Lord God, and that it, it would be just you, Lord. Um, uh, touch our hearts today, Lord. Let us walk away from this uh, place uh, growing in you and learning uh, what your word says about who we are, Lord God, and that we are called. We thank you for what you're about to do and what you've already begun in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. It is um, a good Sunday. It's a beautiful day outside, right? I love that it's such a beautiful day. The sun is out and... Um, I came uh, with a purpose uh, today. I came with a purpose. And um, I, I was, as we kick off this uh, series for the next few weeks, um, <laughs> call called. It's like, you know, call called. I don't know. Um, I was thinking about, um, you know, we hear this a lot in the church world. We hear, you know, what's your calling? Am I called? And what are you called to? And, and everything else like that. And, and sometimes we get confused. We get confused about, what that is and who is called and uh, am I called and who's calling anyhow. And, and, and we're like, we're confused with that and we get confused with our purpose. We get confused with purpose and, and then our giftings. And we, we think, is my purpose and my giftings and call is that all the same thing? And, and honestly, it's not. It's all different. But the great thing about our God is he uses purpose and our giftings and our calling, all of it together. He uses all of those things together. That's the wonderful thing about our God. He's given us purpose, a purpose or, 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 or an intent uh, to do something. He's given us giftings. He's given us special abilities and talents that we, have, that we have in us. But he's also called us. He's also called us. What, what is called? It, it, it's a summons or a request to come. It's a call. Uh, I'm sorry. It just reminded me I need to make a call. I apologize about that. Give, give me one second, real quick. My bad. You know, talk amongst yourself if you want. I don't know. Take a little break. Pray to Jesus. Or I just, because I always forget. Like, I mean, I'm, you know, you always have to make a call, and then you forget to, like, make the call. And I'm like, that just reminded me. Make a call. Make a call. Come on. Oh, my God. Come on. This is the 
CJ. Sorry to miss oh your my call, God. but go ahead and leave a message, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. At this tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hey, bro, give me a call back, okay? I'm busy right now, but uh, in about 30 minutes or so, give me a call back. Thanks for ignoring my call, even though you're sitting in the same room. Appreciate that. Bye. <laughs> How many have ever done that when, you, when, you're, when somebody calls you and you're out in public, like at a store, right? You're, run, you're walking in Target, and somebody calls you, and you look down, and you really don't want to answer it, but then all of a sudden you think they might be behind you calling you. Have you ever done that, right? And you're like, I ain't going to answer that. And you're like, oh, my gosh, are they here? Are they watching me? Because I've had that so many times. I, I, I've been in the car, and some, but now, you know, you can't answer the call because I'm going to get a ticket if I do or something, you know. And, and, and I don't answer the phone. I'm like, you know, I'll call them back later. And then I look over, and they're, like, right next to me in the car. They're like, you didn't answer, you know. I'm like, my bad, you know, I'll call you later, you know. <laughs> I, I believe that. We have all been called. If you, if you look at this closely, called and all in the middle stands out. All of us have been called. And just like I, I talked about last week of, of starts in our lives, that there's not just one start in our life, but there's multiple starts in our life. I believe that there, there is a call in our life and there are multiple calls throughout our life. You see, I believe the first call is God is calling or summoning us to, to, into a relationship through his son, Jesus Christ. He is calling us to be in relationship with him. That's a call that all of us have. But just like my little knucklehead brother who didn't answer the phone, a lot of us don't answer that call. We let it go to voicemail. We say, oh, they'll call back. Or I'll get to them later. And God has been calling you. It's been calling you. And you've just allowed it to go to voicemail. He's saying, would you just answer the phone? I ain't going to hate on you. I'm not going to sit here and point out every wrong that you've ever done in your life and, and demean you. Oh, no, I want to love you. I want to be in a loving relationship with you. Would you just answer the call? That's the first call. Now, as a believer of Jesus, when you answer that call, and you begin to walk in a relationship with Jesus. You begin to, to live this life out as being a Christ follower. I want to talk about the call in our life as Christ followers, as, as the church of Jesus Christ. What does that look like? For the next few weeks, we're going to talk about the calling that we all have as followers of Jesus Christ. And if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, we welcome you. We're glad you're here. You belong before you believe. But I urge you and I encourage you to listen to this and, and know that there is an opportunity for you as well to be a believer of Jesus Christ. Any one of us, he wants us all he wants us all to come into a loving relationship with him. But church, what is the calling that he has placed on us as believers of Jesus? What is the calling in that? Our key scripture we're going to look at today is 1 Peter 2.21. We're going to, this is our key scripture throughout the weeks. It says, to this you were called because Christ suffered for you. Peter's talking to the church right here. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. To this you were called. Everyone say called. called. Come on, say called. called. Remember, called is the summons. It's the request that Jesus is asking you to be. As Christ's followers, we are to be like Jesus. He is our example. We should walk in his footsteps. We should look like Jesus. We should respond like Jesus. We should have compassion like Jesus. So today, to kick off this series of called, I want to talk about an area that he's calling us all to as believers. As children of God, you are called to care. We are called to care. And, I, and, and, and so much in this day and age, caring has been pushed back on the wayside. I don't know how many times I hear throughout a week of people say, I just really don't care. We've gotten so frustrated and, and so 
consumed with, with, with situations and circumstances. And I'm not belittling circumstances and situations. I'm not. They're real. But why do we get to the point that we just don't care? First of all, we don't even care for ourselves. We can't care for others if we're not caring for ourselves, right? We need to begin to care like Jesus cares. Philippians 2, 20, 21 in the New Living Translation says, I have no one else like Timothy. Paul is saying this. I have no one else like Timothy who genuinely cares about your welfare. Paul is talking to the church. Here's somebody who really genuinely cares. You know when somebody's faking it, right? You know when somebody's trying, come on, we all, let's just be real. We know when somebody's faking that they really care. Oh, I'm so sorry, you know. And you're like, you don't care. You don't genuinely care. He says, all the others care only for themselves. Ouch. And not for what matters to Jesus Christ. That, 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 that's deep right there. That's deep. Let me read that again because we need, we need to get this in us as believers of Jesus. All the others care only for themselves. How many times has that been me? How many times has that been you? And not for what matters to Christ. Christ, does this matter to you? Does this matter to you? Do you care about this? Because if you care about this, then I, I want to have the care. I want to have the compassion of this. To, to say that you care but do not act is, is, is like you don't care at all, really. Caring means that there is action involved. True compassion demands action. When we care, there should be compassion that happens in our lives. When was the last moment in your life that you had so much compassion for another person that it moved you into action? When was that? When was the last time that you moved into action because of the compassion in your life? Do you understand when the word, when the Bible talks about compassion, the, the, the little translation of that is to be moved into action? To have compassion. Oh, I'm compassionate. No, you're not. It's not genuine. You can't just say compassion without action in it. Jesus was the example of true compassion in our lives. Let me tell you, we are all called to care. As believers of Jesus Christ, if the church of Jesus would just understand, if we could care for one another and for his people, think how we could change the world if we would just learn to care. I'm talking about everyone around us. We have that, that waitress or that waiter, and we're like, oh, man, what's wrong with them? Why don't we have some compassion and some care behind that? Maybe they're walking through something. I don't know. That person behind the counter at Target, and, and they're checking you out. Not checking you out like that. I mean, <laughs> they're checking your items out, you know. <laughs> and, and, and you're thinking to yourself, well, they're not very friendly. They didn't even say, you know. I uh, hope your day is good. And, and that's how I am with customer service. Anybody else like that with customer service? Like, you couldn't even say hello. You couldn't even take a look at, at me. You know, like, just look on up and say good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is. You know, you don't, we don't have to dive into a full conversation, but at least say hello. And God began to give me compassion because I'm thinking, like, I don't know what that person's walking through right now. I don't know what maybe fear might be placed in them right now would have happened earlier that day or that week or whatever it might be. And, and so in those situations where things begin to rise that are not of God in me, I say, God, give me compassion. Give me compassion for that person. God, show me how to love that person. And maybe your action is, is, is simply to be the one that says good morning or the one that says, how was your day? I don't know how many times I've said that to people. That, that in the customer service arena that I say, how was your day? How are you doing? And they're like, oh, whoa, whoa, um, I'm, I'm okay, you know? I mean, <laughs> people are surprised by that because they're like, why do you even care? Because in our day and age, most of us just don't care. We're just getting through our day. I got plenty to do. I don't have enough time to care. But as Christ followers... We are called to care. Jesus shows us time and time again the compassion that he has for people. In Matthew 14, 14, it says, when Jesus landed, he saw a large crowd, and he had compassion. Say compassion. 
compassion on them, and he healed their sick. There's action in it, right? Matthew uh, 20, 34, Jesus had compassion. Say compassion. He had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately, they received their sight and followed him. When Jesus landed in Mark 6, 34, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. It wasn't just like, oh, I have compassion for you. No, I have compassion, and I'm going to do something about it. I have compassion, and I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to take action in it. And maybe your action might be that you walk away and you begin to pray for that person. And they never even know it. Maybe that's your action. But I pray as believers of Jesus Christ that that we wake up and and stop being like Paul was telling uh, the church, that it stop being about ourselves all the time. We're so about ourselves, right? What I'm walking through, what I'm going through. Yes, you're going through it. Yes, you're walking through something. I get it. Guess what? So is your neighbor. So are the people around you. You look at them and you say, they got it all together. No, guess what? None of us have it all together, okay? We're all walking through something in some, uh, it's in some degree. But if we can care for one another, if we, could, if we could look at one another and care for each other, what a difference that would make. You might know the story in the Bible about the Good Samaritan. And if you don't know that story, you've probably heard that phrase. Oh, he's a Good Samaritan. Right? Anybody heard that before? Yes? No? Raise your hand if you've heard the Good Samaritan. Just that phrase. Good. Okay, we're on the same track. I'm going to read a little bit here, but I need to have some water before I choke like I did last week. So, Here we go. I'm going to read in Luke 10, 25, 29. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. But, but lean in on this. Please don't just go to sleep. Wake up, all right, um, and, and listen in on this, what happens in this situation. Luke 10, 25, 29 says, one day an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. I felt like I needed to read this part. He said, teacher, this is the religious guy, okay? He said to Jesus, calling him teacher, what should I do? To inherit eternal life. Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? And the man answered this. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him. Do this and you will live. There it is. You already knew, man. Why are you even asking me? Why does he ask that question? Because he wants to try to find a loophole. Here it is. The man wanted to justify his, oh, sorry, right. And the man wanted to justify his actions. So he asked Jesus. And who is my neighbor? Here's the, he's trying to find this loophole. Like, because Joe, who lives next door to me, I don't really like Joe. Because Joe don't cut his lawn, and I cut my lawn. You know? Joe has a recliner on his front porch, and I'm saying, Joe, put your recliner inside. Your lazy boy go inside, not on the front porch. Okay? I'm not talking about you, Pops, but <laughs> it was like, wow. So, so this religious man says, so which neighbor are you talking about, Jesus? Like, is it okay with just some of my neighbors? Who's your neighbor? Come on, anybody. Who's your neighbor? The people around you, everyone, right? Look to your right and look to your left. Say, you're my neighbor. Come on, turn to somebody and say, you're my neighbor. You're my neighbor. I love this. The man wanted to justify his actions. Obviously, there was some actions. We don't know right now what his actions were, but he he wanted to justify them. So he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? And I love how Jesus responds. If you ever read the Bible, I encourage you to dive into the Bible. Jesus always speaks in stories and parables. I love Jesus' stories. Whenever somebody tells me, like, why do you tell so many stories, Dan? It's because I learned from Jesus who tells stories, okay? He told stories. People get stories. So what does Jesus answer with? Jesus replied with a story. That's what it says in verse 30. Do we have that up there? Verse 30. Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. That's like a good movie right there, okay? If you're like, oh, the Bible's boring. This is like fighting happening right now. They're doing karate and everything. It said, by chance, a priest came along. By chance. But when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. Okay? This guy got beat up. He's on the side of the road. 
priest walks out, and he's like, oh, dang, like, that sucks, and just keeps on walking. That's pretty much what happened, okay? But when he saw the man lying there, he crossed the other side of the road and passed him by. Then a temple assistant, all right, a temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also said, oh, dang, that sucks, and kept on walking on by. That's what happened. So you're telling me that this guy just got beat up. He's sitting on the side of the road. And here is a religious person, right? Or we, we would say a good person, looks and says, hmm, I don't really want to get involved in that. And then another person comes out and says, hmm, don't really want to get involved with that. What would happen if this morning before you walked in, there was somebody just beat up sitting on the side of our curb right here? How many of us in this room right now would walk on by because you would say, I really don't want to deal with that right now? I got my own mess. I barely made it here. Like, he's obviously jacked up. Hopefully, hopefully somebody else will take care of that. You see, you always have an excuse to justify not getting involved. You could always justify an excuse. Guess what? I've done it. And I bet many of you have done it as well. And, and I'm not talking just about a man beat up on the side of the road. I'm talking about somebody hurting. Somebody who needs to be cared for. You know people who need to be cared for. And God has given you the opportunity to walk on by. To show that you care. And yet many of us, unfortunately, and I'm including myself in this, guys. I'm not pointing the finger at you. Have walked on by because we want to justify an excuse. That's not compassion, though. That's not compassion. The story goes on. In verse 33, it says this. Then a despised Samaritan. Everyone say despised Samaritan. Not just a Samaritan, but a despised Samaritan. Dun, dun, dun. Right? He came along. And when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. This despised Samaritan. Why, why is he a despised Samaritan? Does anyone know? He's despised Samaritan because he was a half-breed, okay? And the Jewish people did not want anything to do with any Samaritan. I'm just going to make it real right here. You see somebody hurting, and you're going to look at somebody, and you're going to judge them by the way they look or the appearance or who they are, and you're going to say, that's a half-breed, and I'm not going to get involved or tangled up in that. Come on, right? This is what happens here. But who's the one who stops? The Samaritan. Going over to him, the man who was beat up, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. Many of us would be like, man, good job, Samaritan. You, 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 you soothed his wounds, man. It's crazy that you had, you know, virgin olive oil with you and wine, but okay, cool. You know, you're just packing it, you know. <laughs> and you bandaged, and we would say that would be good enough. But it wasn't just that. He, he also put him on his own donkey. He said, look, take my place on my donkey, and I'll walk, and let me take you to an inn. And it says, and he took care of him. You see, this Samaritan, this good Samaritan, why was he good? Because he was willing to be inconvenienced to care for somebody. He, 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 I'm sure he didn't wake up that morning and say, oh, man, I wish I could help a Jewish guy who despises me, who doesn't like me, who hates me. I hope I can help somebody like that today. I hope I can, you know, take a few hours because I'm sure this wasn't just like, oh, let me give you five minutes of my time. Let me care. You know, no, this was some time that was put into this. He was so-called inconvenience. I'm telling you right now, as the church, as Christ's followers, we need to learn to be inconvenienced so that we can care for one another. 
We have been called to care for one another. It's time that we look at inconveniences as wrong and look at inconveniences as maybe this is God giving me the opportunity to be like him, to walk like him, to act like him. Maybe that's what it is, to care for, to care for. Now, no, 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 there's a difference here between caring and controlling, okay? See, a lot of us, we, we want to control the situation. God hasn't called us to control. He's called us to care. He's called us to care. See, true compassion moves us into action. You see, when you have true compassion, it's not for our benefit. He wasn't, I'm sure the Samaritan wasn't looking around saying, I hope somebody see me, what I'm doing, check it out. Hey, let's shoot a video of this. You know, this is going to get a million hits. I'm the despised one, but look at me helping out the Jew. You know, no, he just did it. Was inconvenienced. Going on. It says Luke 10, 35, all right? The next day, oh my gosh, this is going on. A lot of us would be like, we did our part. We're done. I gave time. I'm good. Oh, my gosh. This guy goes, the next day he handed the innkeeper, well, this is what happened, two silver coins telling him, take care of this man. And if his bill runs higher than this, I will pay you the next time I'm here. Guess what? Compassion costs. Caring costs something. But I promise you this, the fee or the cost of caring will, will never outweigh the blessings of our God on your life. The blessings he will pour out on you and on his church and on his people, if we would just have compassion and care, we are all called to care. There was a cost that happened. Verse 36, we're moving on. It says, now Jesus is asking this religious person, he's telling the story. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor? Remember the priest that walked out and, and the other church worker that walked out and then the despised Samaritan. <laughs> which one of these three would you say was his neighbor, was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits, Jesus asked. And the man replied, the religious man said this, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Go and do the same. You want to care? Show some mercy to your neighbor. Show some mercy to, look, look, we want people to show some grace and mercy on us. But we need to learn as Christ followers to dish out mercy. We say we care and there is no mercy behind it. There's no grace behind it. What we want to do is we want to control and change you right away. Look, we're not, I'm not in the changing business myself. God is the only one who can change. Do I want to see life change? Do I want life change for myself? Heck yeah. But I'm not trying to change people because I can't. Dan cannot change anyone, but God can change people. God can change the situation. And God can change lives. God can change lives. You are called. You are called. Who's called? All of us. All of us. All of us. First, the call is a call to know him. And the next call is to be like him. I'm called. You're called. What will you do with this? What will you do with this calling? Father, help us to get out of the way, God. Out of our own selfishness. I hear somebody saying, well, I can't care for anybody because... Because no one's caring for me. Why don't somebody care for me? Look, in, 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 my, in my moments where I feel like no one cares about Dan, and what I'm walking through, first of all, 
majority of those people don't even know <laughs> because I've never even said it. Guess what? We're not mind readers, okay? <laughs> Why don't you let somebody know? Some things are not just obvious, I'm telling you. Yes, I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit because he can reveal and show, but, but sometimes it's just not obvious to us. So I, I'm learning myself. When, when I get in this moment of no one cares about Dan, no one cares what I'm walking through, that I need to let somebody know that I'm hurting. I need to let somebody know that I'm, I, I, I'm in trouble, that, that I'm battling right here. I need to let somebody know so they can show me God's care and compassion. And the other part of it is when I feel like no one cares about me, I begin to care for others. And when I begin to show compassion and care to others, God's compassion begins to come on my life. It becomes real to me. I begin to experience his compassion. I remember years ago when I, when I was suffering with Crohn's disease, I remember, I remember sitting in my hospital bed and the doctors are saying, there's nothing we can really do for you. You're probably just going to die this way and probably sooner than later. Because <laughs> it will begin just to shut you down. And I'm sitting in this hospital. And I felt God's presence and love on me. And compassion on me. And so I got up out of my bed. And I began to walk around the hospital floor. And I would stop at each room where the door was. And I began to pray over whoever was in that room. And show compassion and care. And I said, God, let your love and let your presence fill this room. Lord, if they know you, I pray that you would show that you are still here for them. And God, if they don't know you, I pray that they would come to the realization of who you are in their life. And I began to go, instead of sitting there thinking like, this sucks for me, and it did. I decided to care for others. And I tell you this not to be like, oh, great, Dan, you're so cool, or whatever. I felt propelled out of my bed because God showed his compassion and care and love to me that I had to care for others. You see, when you've received God's care, and his compassion and mercy in your life, oh, man, you can't help but want to care for others. Church, let us care for one another like Jesus cares for us. Lord, thank you. Thank you that you care so much you, you care about our day. You care about our situation. You care about our family. You care about everything in our lives. We're, we're your kids. Lord, I, I pray as Christ followers that you would begin to show us how to care once again. Because I, I believe the church of today has just pushed that aside about caring. Holy Spirit just said this. You've been fighting to care again because you've been hurt in the past. He said, don't let the hurt in the past stop you from caring once again because I am a healer of your hurt. And yes, hurt happens in this world, unfortunately, because there's sin in this world. But he says, when you stop caring What I see as an image is a dried up heart. Just a shriveled up heart. Don't let that happen. Lord God, so I pray right now, Lord, that for all of the hurts, which could be very valid hurts, God. But I pray that those hurts would be mended by your love, by your mercy, by your grace, by your presence. 
God, and I pray, Lord, that we would learn to care once again. That we would care once again. I pray that we would walk through our week. Holy Spirit, remind us the moment that we want to say, I don't really care. Holy Spirit, I pray for every single person who hears this right now. Every person in this room, every person watching right now. That the Holy Spirit will remind us and convict us of, no, 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 no. You're a follower of Jesus. And we're called to care. We're called to care. Remind us of that. Remind us of that. As you continue to pray in this house today, every eye closed, every head bowed. This is your opportunity right now to answer the call of surrendering your life to Jesus. And just like I was calling my brother and he didn't want to answer, guess what? I hung up the phone, I left him a message, and I'll try back a bit later. I'm not going to go over to his house and slam down his door and be like, bro, I can't believe you. That's how our God is. He will call you, and he's been calling many of us into a loving relationship with him and into a new relationship with him. Because I believe there's some of us here that feel like they have a relationship, and he's saying, no, 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 You just know about me. I want to be in a true relationship with you. It's time that you answer the call. Stop letting it go to voicemail because it's going to be a moment where your voicemail is full and he's not going to be allowed to give you a message. (laughs) Answer the call. The Bible says, choose this day. Who will you serve? Will you serve yourself? Is this going to be about you in this life? Or is it about a life lived fully in a relationship with Jesus? So, Father, I pray for every single person here, Lord. You're calling hearts right now. You are... You're speaking to to people's hearts right now, God. If you're here in this house right now and you know you need to answer the call, you know you need to answer the call and you haven't, here's your moment. Here's your moment. Here's your moment. If you're here in this house and you're answering the call, just raise your hand and say, Dan, I'm answering the call right now. I see that hand. I see that hand. Anybody else? Anybody else see the hand? Amen. You're answering the call. Amen, amen. Anybody else? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Church, let's pray together. No one prays alone. Let's pray this together. The Bible says you believe in heart, confess with your mouth that he is Lord, you shall be saved. So, Father, we pray right now. All God's people say this. Say, Lord God. Come on, everybody. Say, Lord God, I come to you. I know I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior. Save me today. I hear you calling, and today I answer the call. No more is this life my own. My life belongs to you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said amen, amen.